All right, so we are using SketchUp to make these stages in 3D, and we're not actually drawing anything. We're using a bunch of uh, pre-made props that they have. We've modeled our range, but before we even start talking about how to about how to make these stages, let's just talk about moving around in SketchUp because it's the most important thing. Uh, first and foremost, you need a mouse. If you don't have a mouse, you hate yourself, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using a touchpad on a laptop because making it as hard as it can possibly be. So I'm using the touchpad on the uh, on my laptop, and by using two fingers, I can scroll on the touchpad and zoom in or out, um, just dragging down or dragging up zooms in and out as you're probably used to in other apps as well. Before we get going, there are basically two versions of SketchUp that you can use for free. There's SketchUp Free, which is web-based, and then there's SketchUp Make 2017, which you can download and use without a license, and that's what this client is that you're seeing is uh, SketchUp Make 2017. So we, uh, if you've got a mouse, the scroll wheel becomes your best friend. Uh, the scroll wheel, you can scroll in and out with it, obviously. If you click, hold, and drag, that basically gives you the hand tool. Uh, keyboard shortcut is H, and this is just pan. You can drag around the uh, stage. If you click and spin, or if you click and then kind of like rotate, uh, it becomes orbit, and the keyboard shortcut for orbit is O. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to use that. And to use your selection tool at any time, you just hit space bar. So you are gonna be using your offhand to use keyboard shortcuts. So if you don't have a scroll wheel, then you're gonna be using the crap out of O, H, and space bar uh, to move things around. The next thing that's worth talking about is how you actually manipulate things. So if I want to place this around, I click on it to select it, it's gonna turn blue I click M for move, and then I can click at the bottom of it and I can drag it around. Now, uh, this is gonna use one instance of the object, but if I touch control after I have it selected, now it's using a copy. So I can copy it around. And that's uh, generally what I do is I just have this like library of props and I will uh, use the move control. So I'll press M then hit control and, and move it around. And if I hit like, if I want to do three of them, then I can click on one thing, uh, hit control, move it over. Let's say if I wanted to put three evenly spaced, I can place that one and then hit the number three X, and then the letter X, and it'll copy two more. So if you want to make a bunch of a certain kind of object, that's a, a good shortcut to be able to do it. Uh, now these objects are actually groups of objects because if you see here I have this target library and an empty target stand so if I want to create a um, if I want to create a target presentation that isn't currently assembled like if I just wanted a freestanding IPSC target first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the target I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna grab kind of the back edge uh, this is so hard without a mouse and so I'm gonna use my M to move it I'll select the back edge of that target right there, hit my control key so that it comes out. Whoops, uh, zooming is hard without a mouse. <laughs> and then I wanna put it on the face in the group. All right, so there we go, I've placed it properly. So now if I select both of these objects, so if I hold down shift and then click on something, you can see the mouse key goes to a plus minus. <clears throat> I can so there we go, I've created a target. Now the problem though is if I just click on it wanting to move it, I don't have my sign. So if I move this guy away, the sign stays put. So what I wanna do is I want to select one, hold down shift, select the other, um, right click, and then go to make group. And now the items are joined. So when I click anywhere, if I just grab the base for instance, and I wanna move it, the whole thing comes with me. So that's how you can create kind of these big dumb objects that you can sort of drag around. The next bit is gonna be actually, cause it's not all right angles, you're gonna to wanna to be able to rotate. The, the Q for uh, rotating, or the shortcut is Q, is the, is, but you can see it gives you this little protractor looking thing. When it's blue like that, it means it's, it's rotating it along the blue axis. Blue axis is vertical, 
green axis is sort of uh, just considered the x-axis, red axis is y-axis. So if I want to rotate this target, I can use rotating on the blue thing. It'll make you click on one edge, then click on another, and now I can just rotate it around. Similarly, if you're using like the low 45 kind of targets, let's see, let me get my low 45 targets in. Here we go. So if I wanted to like make an IPSC target out of this, then so if I collect, if I select both of them, I can explode the component. Now it's going to reduce it to its component part. So it's a target and the stand. I don't want that target. So there we go. Let's say this is the target that I want to put on the stand. So I'll move him over there. And now I'll, this is going to be so painful to do on the laptop. So there we go. All right, I've got my guy here. I'm gonna click Q to rotate. Now I'm gonna try and click on the edge and get a, um, a green or a red, there we go. So now they got that, I click up and then up and now I'm rotating on an axis. Uh, that looks pretty close. And it's you don't have to get it perfect when you do this kind of thing, you can get pretty close. See like that's not perfect but it conveys enough of the meaning of what you're trying to do to whoever's gonna build the stage that they understand what you're trying to do. So you don't have to get it absolutely perfect. You can really get yourself a little mad if you want to, but uh, if you don't wanna get mad, then I would suggest using uh, a mouse, unlike what I'm doing right now. And there you go. So now I have this nice low target that I can orbit around and it looks reasonably good. You can see it's not perfect because it's just kind of floating off the sticks, but who really cares because it reads like that when you look at it from above. Uh, next trick is fault lines. So in this model, we've got a bunch of fault lines that are kind of pre-made. Um, <laughs> I have grabbed some accidentally and not used the copy command. So there you go. Uh, I've stopped using like the correct size stick. And what I'll actually do is I will click on a fault line because it's basically just uh, kind of a rectangular prism is I'll double click on something and it, it'll actually give you the ability to edit the group when you double click on something like that. What, why is my computer thinking? So it'll give you the ability to edit it. So if you press P, you get your push pull tool and you can click on the edge of it and you can stretch it out whatever distance you want to do that way. So that's how I actually use fault lines. Like I'll just place like one fault light around in each direction, then I'll stretch it to whatever distance I need. So hit escape to get out of the screen. The computer's starting to bog down, it's annoying. So that's how you sort of manipulate and get around. Let's just talk real quick about what makes a good stage. So in my opinion, what makes a good stage is some sort of variety and not just drawing um, drawing the same type of position. It's worth noting that per USPSA rules, you can't see targets once you cross the 180. So we ended up using, like on this stage, we ended up using Bianchi's to cut off the angle. Uh, start positions being sort of non-obvious ways to shoot it. Um, this stage pretends like it's, it's not an obvious way, but there were some people who ended up shooting it a couple different ways. Some people went back right, some people went back left. Uh, to take all this stuff out, uh, depending on what they wanted. Since some of these targets are available through the port, some people actually did shoot the steel and this through the port. And then this array was basically the same. So uh, just do more interesting things. Don't make stages that are a bunch of parallel uh, stages where it's just symmetric and totally the same. Uh, do not put more than one target on uh, a stand unless there's a reason to do so. Uh, and like in this, this was, was sort of a speed test and a positional like this one little microcosm right here uh, with the, whoops, orbit is what I want. So like this position, we wanted to basically create, it. all the shooting is very easy. All the shooting is within five yards or whatever it is and we've got four targets here. And the reason we wanted to do that was to force people to take risks and go fast. Like 
the hardcover uh, is no penalty mics, so, but you have to be good enough to call your shots. This is really used at sort of middle and longer distances, but where you can't see bullet holes. If you want to create some risk uh, close up, you can use no, no shoots like that. Uh, so that that's one thing. Um, do not use, this was not one of my favorite stages. And we just kind of threw this one in. Um, this was meant to be kind of a positional trap, forcing you to try and hit this and then have to enter into the port and doing it that way. Now there is a low port. That's kind of the novelty that was of this stage, uh, where you had to shoot a, a steel array, but just some things to consider when you're making these kind of stages, consider how many props you're using. Uh, and restricting view lines towards other targets. So this uses a bunch of walls right here. I wanted to be able to like move one wall over here to cut off views towards these targets, which I could do, but the problem is through this port, you can then see everything over here, which wasn't the intention. So there was no way around having those walls, but always tried to use the smallest amount of props you can because uh, it makes setup and tear down a little bit easier. So try and accomplish whatever your goal is using the minimum number of props you can get away with. Um, and try not to do stuff that, that is symmetric. I'll show you a couple more stages that I really liked uh, just to kind of give you an idea of the thought that went into some of these stages. So this stage, I actually really like. This was drawn by Koi, and then I kind of tuned it up to make it good. And honestly, the man, got my hand tool, I want my orbit tool. And honestly, this was pretty cool because it was very positional. Uh, there was only one way to shoot it, but it was fun. And it, it just had a good blend of target presentations. Like these were very close targets with the hardcover, so it kind of slowed you down. But there's a bunch of open targets as well to force you to kind of go fast, used a bunch of hardcover to encourage people to go fast without too many speed bumps in the way. And this kind of final steel presentation, we had three different difficulties of um, target. Now it's worth noting that the steel target, the tape measure is good to use. Press T to bring up the tape measure and it'll tell you, see that that steel is as close as we can put it to that window. It's about 24 feet to that window. So it's as close as we can bring it to the window to make it as easy to shoot as possible. Then we've got one at like 10 yards, which is also easier to shoot. And then at like 12 yards, we've got the split popper, which is about twice as difficult to target, but it doesn't look that much harder because of the split popper being used. Uh, another good thing to do is you see the barrel here. When you put steel next to paper, you need to use these barrels to there, there'll be frag and splatter, especially with people shooting jacketed bullets that will splash onto the targets and tear them up and make them more difficult to score. So when you use um, a bunch of steel like this, uh, it's good to insulate the paper targets from the frag from the steel targets. So be sure and do that. Let's look at a couple other stages. Whoa, I just hit, hit her. All right. So again, this is a stage that it's not particularly parallel. There's not exactly more than one way to sort of shoot it. This was really meant to be kind of a hoser stage, but with a bit of flair because the navigating this back section, there's a few ways you could do it. And they were all sort of honestly the same. It worked out to be from a time perspective. Uh, some people went left first uh, and shot these and then came to the right and stayed inside the shooting area. And some people um, kind of backed out of this position here finish here and shortcut to the front of the shooting area. It didn't really matter how you did it, but because every target has hardcover, it made it more interesting because none of the shooting is difficult and you won't get penalized for any of it. But if you fail to see that you shot in the black, then obviously there's a penalty. So that was a fun example of a hoser stage. This was a fun example of a stage that basically a briefcase started on this barrel. You had to pick up the briefcase and put it in this little chimney thing over here to activate the two uh, swingers. And the reason we use two swingers like that there is it basically forces you to do it because if you have uh, potentially four shots off the table that you can't score points for, then it becomes 
too painful to ignore. We didn't want people to ignore the prop. So you effectively, you, I mean, you could throw the case over there if you wanted to. What people ended up doing is we took these big poppers and put the like bouncy bridge right here. And then we had steel uh, hardcover plates behind them. So if you missed in between these targets, you would hit the hardcover and it sounded like you hit, you hit the target. So you had to call your shots very well. And this ended up being a fun stage. It kind of burned a couple people, myself included in the match, but this is a kind of a novelty stage. There's really only kind of one way to do it. And um, it was really about the prop manipulation. And the best way to shoot it really was just to deal with the one-handed shooting on the shaky bridge. But the round count here was intentional. You got two, four, six, there's one behind here, eight, plus four is 12, um, 14, 16, 18, 20. So it is a 20 round stage with four pieces of steel that you have to shoot one hand. So the people in limited and carry optics would really be challenged and potentially run the slide lock. So that was a cool example of a stage. This was another cool example of a stage uh, because there are basically this is a shooting area, this is a shooting area, and then here was a shooting area, and up here was a shooting area. So there are four places you had to go to shoot at all the targets, and it was basically on you to figure out the most efficient way to get there. So some people um, ran here and then were able to shoot everything here and run straight to the last position. Um, and then like guys like JJ would shoot here, go here, and then do it kind of that way. There, there wasn't a like wholesale different way to do it, but the engagements and the views that you got made the stage interesting. And I mean, the amount of running you had to do. So from the start position to sort of right there, that's 28 feet, so about 10 yards of running. And then if you were to run all the way to the last starting position over here, it's another sort of 10 yards. So, I mean, there was, there was, depending on how you did it, about 25 to 30 yards of running. That was kind of the big concept on this stage that made it interesting. Lots of varied target presentations. Um, no position had more than about six shots that you had to take from it. Um, and the bouncy bridge was kind of interesting here. That's what this, this platform is because you wanted to shoot on the move across it, but shooting on the move on a bouncy bridge really screws up your sights. So it ended up being interesting. But... That's kind of a peek inside the head of how to draw stages. If you've got questions, let me know in the comments. Appreciate you.